Hey guys, welcome back to another Tech Guru video. Today we're in Photoshop and I'm going to be showing you how to make these really snazzy looking aluminum buttons in Photoshop. So if you want to learn, stick around. All right, the first thing that you want to do is open up Photoshop and create a new project or document and change the width of it to 1000 and the height to 1000 as well, pixels. You want to set these numbers here just because we're going to be adjusting other numbers in the project and this will be relative. So if you learn how to do it you can always go back and change the size of your canvas once you've got that done there click OK once we have our canvas ready to go the first thing that we want to do is grab our rounded rectangle tool which is right over here on our toolbar grab the rounded rectangle tool and go ahead and create a nice size rounded rectangle on your document center that uh, somewhat to where you get it to where you like it and once you have done that you want to go ahead and change the fill color of that rounded rectangle to a light gray color the one that I used is number B4 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 very simple and easy to remember once you have set the color of that you need to rasterize that layer go over and click on the rounded rectangle layer you want to right click go up to rasterize layer which is right here once you have rasterized that layer we then want to start playing with the blending options go ahead and right click on that layer one more time go to the top to where you see blending options alright once you have your blending options panel open and you're under the gradient overlay you need to go ahead and change the opacity of that to 65 percent and you need to change the style to angle right here and then you need to click on the gradient which is right here just click anywhere on it there and you need to add seven or nine gradient stops it needs to be an odd number for what we're trying to accomplish as you can see here I have added seven in between here so I have a total of nine you want to add those by clicking anywhere under the gradient once you see the little hand icon there you can click and it will add gradient stops for you okay so again to easily add gradient stops just click anywhere underneath the gradient there so again once you have completed that and you have all of your gradient stops underneath there you need to make sure they are alternating between black and white in order to change the color of a gradient stop you need to double click on it and choose your color and then click OK once you have your seven or nine gradient stops and they're alternating from black to white go ahead and click OK as you can see we're already getting that nice aluminum shine to our object the next one we want to apply is a bevel and emboss so click up here on bevel and emboss you want to change the style to inner bevel the technique needs to be set to chisel hard the depth needs to be set to 100 percent the direction needs to be up the size needs to be 10 pixels and under shading you want the angle to be 90 degrees and the altitude to be 45 degrees once you are done with all of that you can now click OK and all of that has been applied so once you are done with your rounded rectangle we are now going to create a brand new layer this is going to be our texture layer so go down to your layers panel and create a brand new layer once you've created a new layer go ahead and select that layer and grab your paint bucket tool which is over here in your toolbar make sure the paint bucket tool is selected and you want to paint with the same gray color that we have used earlier which again the number is B4 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 so click OK once you have that color selected and paint that entire layer that same exact color once you are done with that we now want to apply a few filters so go up with that layer selected and click on filter 
you want to go down to noise add noise you want to set the amount to seven percent you want to change the distribution to Gaussian and you want to have monochromatic selected down at the bottom click OK now we want to apply one more filter so go to filter blur radial blur just like so you want to change the amount to 50 the blur method to spin and the quality to best and then click OK this may take a second to apply but once that is done you then want to go up to image adjustments and go to curves now this is very important you want to adjust these to look similar to mine so you want to drag the grays and the light tones down just a little bit but you want to take these blacks down here at the bottom all the way down so it has a nice slope up just like that once you have done that you can go ahead and click OK the next thing that you want to do is you want to apply a layer mask so all of this is only applied to your button and not the whole background so you want to go ahead and command or control click over the button there so it is highlighted and selected with your texture layer above it go you know it has to be selected and then go down to apply layer mask that will apply it only to your button once we have that layer mask done we can then go up and change the blending mode of the texture layer to overlay so in order to do that click right here where it says normal and go down to where you see overlay and that again adds it a nice overlay effect and we're really starting to see the aluminum effect all right we only have a couple more things to do now what you want to do now is you want to drag your image so I have the logo that I'm going to drag which I'm going to put right up here I'm gonna drag that down here so I have the logo I'm gonna click with my move tool and I'm gonna click and hold and drag that over on top of my button once you're done resizing the logo to fit your button in the center to where it looks nice we're going to add a few blending options to our logo so go ahead and right click on our logo layer and go up to blending options once there you want to go ahead and apply a bevel and emboss by clicking on the bevel and emboss option and you want to change the style to emboss you want to change the direction to down you want to change the depth to 145 that can vary depending on the size of the logo you want to change the size to 10 pixels just like that and then you want to go down here and under the shading options you want to increase the whites up here on the top and decrease the blacks again this will all depend on your image and the desired effect that you want I like 86 and 42 but it all depends on what you want to do once you've done that you then want to go ahead and click OK get out of that and to add a little texture we want to go and click and hold on our logo layer and drag it underneath our texture layer just to add a little texture to it there and then what we want to do is we want to copy that same gradient we used in our rounded rectangle and apply it to our logo so in order to do that click on the blending options for our rounded rectangle and go to gradient overlay go into our gradient by clicking on it and then go up to new where you see the new button just like so and what you want to do is you want to type in the name so whatever you want the gradient name to be you name it whatever you want to name it and then click new and that automatically applies that gradient so you can use it later click OK and get out of that click on our logo layer one more time go into the blending options and go to gradient overlay just like that click on the gradient to open up the gradient editor and then go up and apply that gradient that you just saved now in order to get it to look right you're going to need to change the style of that gradient back to angle 
just like this, and you want to change that opacity of that all the way down to anywhere from 10 to 15. I'm going to leave mine right at, to get that nice shine to it, I'm going to leave mine right at 11. 10 to 12 is the sweet spot that I have found. And then once you're done with that, click OK, and you now have made a really cool looking aluminum logo. Well guys, I hope this tutorial helped you out. If you have any questions on how to go about doing it, put it in the comment box below. Please help me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel for more great content. And I will see you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.